This is the Modern Eater Show. Piping hot and delicious. The Modern Eater. Food, 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 food. Come and eat it. And now your hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, and Brian Freeman. Yes, 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 and yes, the Modern Eater Show live right now. Okay, we finally got it going. We're back. All right, we are doing it. Richie, you did a great job stretching there. Uh, live on Facebook, live on YouTube. Go to themoderneater.com. You can check us out, and there's a live feed there to the show. Big show with us tonight. Brian Freeman to my side. You look very dapper, my friend. Well, thank you. Thank you. Handsome, man. Handsome. It's the holidays, man. Your jacket was my shirt. I mean, literally, <laughs> Brian walked in with a jacket on that was like my shirt. I had to make you take it off because we looked a little crazy. But uh, happy holidays, and that's what it's all about, a little bit thank of you. holiday parties yeah, going exactly. on Exactly. So thanks for joining us tonight. Big show straight to the man of the hour right now, Kevin Morrison. Tacos, tequila, whiskey, no commas. No Let, comments. Let's Straight go, through. baby. I know. Straight let's, through. This is cool stuff. So I don't know. The FCC regulations, I don't even know if I can say the the, the P word is weird. You can say the P word. The P word. In, I, in Spanish, you can say it. Yeah, so uh, F word, Spanish, and then tacos. That's what you're yep. known for here in town. That's how we got started with a food truck. Oh, I know it. Cherry it's Creek. Cherry Creek Farmer's Market, uh, Pearl Street Farmer's Market. That's where we started. You, you guys never cross paths, you and Brian Freeman? He's always running around at farmer's markets. No, I, if, I, if he was dressed like that, I would have noticed him. I, I know you would, but he's usually not. He's usually in a shirt that says either resist or I love dirt or something like that. But truly, uh, and let's just back up. You're going to assemble some delicious food here for us tonight. But, um, I mean, here you go. Your, your, your career is long and illustrious. It's just getting going, but your beginnings is in produce. Yeah. So I was, uh, let me see, got back in, it dates back to my days in Chicago. I was dealing with specialty produce and then came out to Denver, started my own company, Red Tomato, and then we went from a specialty vendor to a mainline vendor. But my, my passion and my heart was with the specialty stuff. Now you, you were kind of doing microgreens and lettuce. <laughs> Is there money in that? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially at that time. Brian, it, there's money in yeah, that. Did there's you know? I know, you know. <laughs> something. <laughs> Grower's organic. He, He's got great stuff. We use his stuff. Do you really? Yeah. yeah. Brian. Uh, again, uh, the, the term that we coined is uh, Brian's forgotten more than we'll ever know about <laughs> produce. I, and I love that about you, Brian. How much uh, uh, you've gone to every one of these restaurants and fish and beer. Yes. I haven't gone to. You have? I haven't gone to fish and beer, but I've been to his. You guys need to go out more, man. Well, listen, talk about it real quick. Yeah, fish and beer. We're at 3510 Larimer in mm-hmm. Rhino. Uh, dinner only, six nights a week, wood-fired, grilled. Mo- majority of our menu comes off the wood fire. Everything you would want. Alamosa bass, East Coast oysters, West Coast oysters, octopus. Great chef in there, great bar program. Changes all, Everything changes all the time. Fun, small place, 50 seats, so it's yeah. busy. So back to the tacos. Yeah. Um, second choice, burgers was your deal? Burgers, I was trying to do a burger joint, and three people beat me to the punch. So I'm like, ah, oh, tacos is second. What were those burger joints at the time? You know, I, got, I think Tag Burger Bar, Smash Burger. Uh, I can't remember the oh, There's like one. Smash, like Park, that. Lark. I like Bad <laughs> yeah, yeah. Daddy's or one yeah. of those as well. I'm happy I settled on tacos, though. I love well, it. So is yeah. Denver. So is yeah, Denver. Yeah, that's my passion. And man. thank you. Colfax location. Colfax was our original one. Yeah. Colfax in New York. And then. Um, was that 2012? Oh, geez, 2011, 2011, Halloween night, 2011. Halloween night. Yeah, Wasn't and then 2013, we opened in the Highlands. Did you feel like that first place at Colfax was a risk just because no parking? I mean, you've got the little lot on the side there, but. You know, I didn't only because the rent was so cheap, and that's the only reason I took that place is because I knew I could get a job and pay rent if it went under. Yep. So I wasn't too worried about it. Now looking back, how I look at locations with parking, demographic, car counts, all that stuff. It was kind of a risky move. Yeah. yeah. But you, you do well there. I mean, every time I've been store. in there, yeah. you guys busy. are busy. I mean, always. It's busy. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because uh, Colfax BID actually uses them an example of how you can be successful on Colfax. <laughs> it was a little challenging in the beginning. Yeah. There was a lot of atmosphere down there sure. at Colfax. Yes, there is. Yeah. So, and there still is, but Colorful. that's what makes it great. Yeah, and kind of fits the brand. It does. Right? Yeah, it yeah. does. We're, I mean, we're street tacos. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta, gotta a little, be a little gutsy coming in. Yeah. So, your background with Mexican food, what's up with that? Tacos, tequila, whiskey, that was it, man. Uh, I grew up in a part of Indiana. We had a lot of family run Mexican restaurants, uh-huh. and my dad would always take me and just love the cuisine. 
but I grew up, our tacos at home were, you know, the ground beef, the packaged package seasoning, <laughs> cheddar cheese. No doubt, huh? Yeah. But I the still McCormick love, seasoning. Exactly, man. But I still love those. When I do taco night at home, that's what I do. MSG. Nice. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, here it is. You're into tacos, now fish and beer. But ingredients-wise, three is where you like it? Uh, I mean, three, that's how you were taught, right? Three is simple, yeah. So the guy I worked for in Chicago loved the dude. He was my chef mentor, my business mentor, because he was a chef owner. Paul LaDuca from Vinci. Oh, yeah. Then went on. He opened the Mexican concept, the Dobo Grill, who's killing it today. Oh, he yeah, that that's concept? a double. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he does great. So I worked for him. I got to work for him for a year and learn more than I realized. Every year I kind of shoot him a, shoot him an email and say, hey, man, thanks for being hard on me. Thanks for instilling, you know, the basics into me. But now, he was always mean, three ingredients. Does that mean no complex flavors? No, you can, you can still get a lot of complex flavors. I mean, I don't stick to the rule 100%. Our lingua taco, we probably have five or six different mm-hmm. ingredients in there. But what our philosophy at Tacos is, you know, we're using ingredients that are native to Mexico. I'm just putting a gringo twist on it. Yeah. You know, because I didn't, I didn't grow up with the cu- cuisine. Uh-huh. I didn't study the cuisine. I know what I like as a chef because that's my background. I think I got a decent handle on what the public wants. So, you know, I went to Mexico every year. We, we'd always go to Tulum, and I'd always seek out the street vendors. And I just look what they're doing, and I kind of gringo fight, as I call it. Nice. Put a twist on it. Yeah. Yeah. What's well, your favorite? I got two questions. No, Sorry. Ahead, two, my favorite is the one I'm doing. I got two favorites. The one I'm doing tonight, queso a la plancha, vegetarian, griddled cotilla cheese, which they call Mexican Parmesan, uh, avocado or guacamole, tomatillo salsa. But my favorite meat ones are carnitas. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's simple. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what's your favorite tequila or whiskey? Ooh. Wait, and whiskey. Tequila or. And tequila, whiskey. No, tequila or. That's a tough one. Depends who's paying. <laughs> I'm paying. Oh, you kid, you're paying? Uh-huh. Um, you know what? Uno Dos Trace is an amazing tequila. All, all lines. Like yep. their Uno's, their Blanco. Mm-hmm. They have an amazing tequila. I Are like you a Blanco that. guy? I'm a Blanco guy, yeah. I think yeah, everybody yeah. is. I'm wondering it's just, who's drinking these other ones. Yeah, no, it just, it, I mean, it's our most popular. Mm-hmm. And it's just a great tequila to sip. I love it with a cigar. Um, and then as far as whiskey, man. Local. Just say local. Oh, local? Strand like, hands. Yeah, Strandies, aren't yeah. they? That's yeah, your yeah. deal right there? Laws, laws I'm, I'm a big Laws guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's because you're paying, but I'm a big Laws guy. Ah, <laughs> let's go. I know Al, so we'll just have Al. Yeah. Bring no, they have off. great stuff. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Uh, so fish and beer, we're out of left field or no? Um. Yeah, but that's kind of how I like to do things. Yeah. You know, shoot I from asked the hip. him earlier. I don't even know if he wants me to remember. Hey, man, why'd you get? He said, I was bored. Yeah, I was bored, honestly. Really? And so I kind of like, I kind of feel like I run my course for a while and I need something new. So we was fish and beer the last three years, and now I'm jumping back into the kitchen at Tacos, and we're kind of elevating our dining, our uh, taco program again. Are you so bored again yet? I'm bored a little bit. Really? I think it's my ADHD, so I try to use it to my advantage. <laughs> is that what it the, is? Med, the meds aren't working, so I'm just using it to my yeah, advantage. Sure. So back, and rewind, spicy pickle. Yeah. Do you mind talking about that just a little bit? It's a sour story, but I, it's all right. I know, but I think it's a lesson to learn. No, it was a good experience. Yeah. I didn't go to – well, I went to a lot of colleges. I just chose not to finish. So, so that was kind of my education in life. One of the founders? Yep. Or the founder? No, one of the founders okay. was a buddy of mine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Spicy Pickle. Then it you, – you. We were. It was great. You know, Tony Walker and I started it. Uh, he was the chef at Barolo Grill, and I had the red tomato produce, and we decided to start this company. Uh, spicy pickle. Wasn't there one on Eighth and Colorado? Eighth and Colorado was our second location. Ninth and Lincoln was our first. Yeah. Oh, Ninth and Lincoln. Yeah. And uh, I would drive to Il Fornaio, the restaurant that was in town. They baked our bread fresh every day, so I'd drive there, pick it up. We used boar's head meats and cheeses, um, some cool ingredients. I mean, at that time, it was really different. Sun-dried tomatoes, roasted eggplant. I mean, in a sub sandwich, yeah. you know, where do you get roasted eggplant? Yeah. I'm a roasted sandwich pork guy. Tabillos. I love that. It was, it was so fun, man. It was so fun. It was a good. It was a good ride. Ten years. Making ten years. Yeah. Making sandwiches. Yeah. And then no. we went. We started franchising, and then we went public. And, 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 and so, new CEO, right? New, new CEO. Yeah. And said, uh, "We're going a different direction, sir." He, he invited me to take my talents elsewhere. Did he really? <laughs> Very politely. That's an interesting. So, thing. so I got fired from the company I started. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it happens. I was very vocal, it and uh, I wasn't a great employee. Did so you that's, I'm like, man, I better open my own business because I'm, I'm unhirable. <laughs> Listen, I say that all the time. Yeah. I'm unemployable. 
I yeah. truly am. I have to cut my own rope because I'm unemployable. We're sitting here and catching up Kevin Morrison here in the kitchen, Studio Kitchen Colorado. Thanks for joining us tonight here on the Modern Eater Show. We're going to assemble your favorite taco, right? Yep. Next segment, we're going to assemble this uh, favorite taco, taco of Kevin. And I wanted to just ask you for, about the spicy pickle. Number one lesson you learned out of that whole thing, 10 years of your life. Control your own destiny. That's it, you know. How, how did those, that, you know, they're looking in this business especially, such small margins, and it's funny, they put break at 30. I've been doing this for 20 years. But then it's like, chef, uh, turn, the, turn the stove on. You know, type yeah, of right. Thing. Um, you've got you've got this going on, and we're you're migrating into the future. Are you going to give us a glimpse of next time you're bored, what you're going to do? Oof. You've got to be thinking about not, it right I'm now. Superstitious. I have something uh, I'm churning. Is there with something I'm talking in your mind? about to some? Friends. Well, they always say burger, pizza, taco. Yeah, it's not going to be pizza. It's not going to be pizza. There's too many. Do you like pizza? Though? I love. It's one of my Chicago favorite foods. For a while. Yeah. No. There's. Uh, I mean, my buddy owns Marco's Coal Fired Pizza. My buddy Drew owns Fat Sully's. I don't want to compete with those guys. <laughs> they do a good job. They do a great job. And uh, Pizza in Denver just, stepping up a little it, bit. The whole restaurant scene in Denver is awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, I travel a lot and, uh, you know, and talking to other chefs around the cities and restaurant tours, and it's a good scene. I mean, we have other restaurant tours coming here and opening places. So that's always a good sign. Mm -hmm. It is interesting if you think about it. We have I like I'd be curious about the restaurants per capita of good restaurants. Yeah. Because you come to Denver, we've only got five million people in Colorado. And we've got a ton of great restaurants. You go to places I mean I I liken Colorado to a mm -hmm. an LA, San Francisco, mm -hmm. any day of the week. Because I mean, you live here. And then, no, I, I, I travel and I was just out there and there's some great Great restaurants, yeah. but we've got a lot here. We have a lot, and a lot of them are approachable. I mean, from a from a just a dining standpoint to a dollar standpoint, mm -hmm. they're so much more approachable than other cities. It's yeah. amazing. You hear a lot of people complain about ticket prices. In, in here in Denver, you go to another city, you're going to spend a lot more on an entree. Um, For sure. Yeah, truly, you are. Yeah. We're going to cut. It's 630 on 630 KHOW, iHeart Radio Station, uh, live at Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Brian Freeman, Greg Hollenbag, Jay Parker, Little Rich Schneider's in the Little Rich Corner with Chris Johnson. There he is, Rome Sausage. Uh, cool. Chris, some ingredients tonight being used by Kevin. That will be awesome. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll assemble these tacos, talk some food when we come back right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeart Radio. Are, 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 we, are we in there? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, it's like Schwarzenegger and Dan DeVito, the twins. <laughs> I know. Okay. Hey, man, thanks for coming down, brother. We thanks love for having me. You come down. Thank you. Uh, what's happening over at Rome? You know, we're seeing uh, a lot of uh, custom opportunities pop up in the last 30, 60 days. Nice. And I think a large part of that is a minimum wage increase in Denver. I think restaurateurs are getting, you know, a little bit uh, gun shy about hiring new folks and paying these, you know, the high minimum wage that they're looking at. So they're, they're looking to outsource. You know, a, a consistent, you know, uh, production from somebody else. So it's been a blessing for us. Yeah. Which, uh, so, so tell us, what's your, when, it, when we're all hibernating and we want those stronger flavors, what's the, what's the sausage? What's the product? Well, we do see a lot of chorizo uh, in winter and uh, really any of the bulk items like breakfast, uh, Italian bulk, hot Italian bulk, chorizo. Um, you know, it's comfort food season. So like, you know, pastas, lasagnas, breakfast burritos, that kind of stuff. So we see more of the bulk uh, through those winter months and more of the links in the uh, summer grilling months. Awesome. Hey, reach out to Rome. There's none better. We'll be right back at Studio Kitchen Colorado. We've got a lively crowd here in the house tonight, and things are just heating up, and I think it's because of the man of the hour. Kevin Morrison, there you are. What's I want, up? I want to say pea tacos so bad on the air. Say it. Say I just, it. Just say it, man. <laughs> I, I, just say it. Just say it. Say it. I might get sued, though. <laughs> Taco. I have a cease and desist order Do you really? Me. Yeah. A few years ago. A few years ago, you got one. By who? The city? No, the city suggests that I change the name. There's a company out in L.A. that uh, has a very similar name. Okay, all right. They were in business. Isn't, but, isn't you know, there right. always. But I like this name, too. It's Taco Tequila Whiskey. And um, you're going to assemble one of these tacos. Again, let's do a recap. What are you making? Yeah, so this is our Queso a la Plancha Taco, vegetarian. This is the first taco that we ever got pressed on in Denver. Westward Magazine came to our um, taco wagon at Pearl Street Market on a Sunday, and the reporter... Lori Mitson ordered this, Lord. fell in love with it, and wrote us about, wrote up about it. 
and uh, it's just been blowing up ever since. And there it is. It's, there held, it is. it's held the course. All right. And yeah. this is vegetarian. This is vegetarian, and uh, like meat eaters love it. Like we get so many meat eaters that said, "No, I'll never try it." So we'd send it out to the table, or if we had a food show, we'd send it out to them, and they fell in love with it. I love it. So we're gonna we're gonna start. We start with we only use rock related tortillas. Of course. We we'll we'll work with three here. So we have our corn tortillas. We only use corn tortillas. This is our griddled cotilla cheese. Oh, that looks so good. So, I know. so it's a cow's milk cheese. They call it the Mexican Parmesan. It tastes very similar to, Me- to uh, Parmesan. Does it take on a different flavor at that point? The cheese, once you griddle it like this, all, it caramelizes, so mm-hmm. it brings out the natural saltiness mm-hmm. in the cheese and a little bit of a nutty flavor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a great combination. This is our house. It's just, just guacamole. Oh, we, you know, smashed avocados, salt, and lime, and that's it. Interesting. No garlic, no... Uh, nope, nope. Just, our, you're back your three ingredients. That's it. Yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> and then our roasted tomatillo salsa. Perfect. And then go ahead and try that. Make sure you get some lime you on there. The acid is going to kind of bring yeah, everything yeah. together. All right, Brian. And I know that this is right up your alley, too, Brian. Is this hot, though? Spicy hot? Yeah, Brian. No, no, no. no, no the no. Tomatillo. You got a little baby no, stomach no, on no, Brian. No, no. no, I'm not a fan of heat. So there's a little. You're sur- not? Not at all. There's a little Serrano chili in the salsa, but uh, very mild. More love- of a background heat. Mm. And I love the way it eats, too. Now, you could put some protein on there. <laughs> You're could. looking at me I don't like- know why you'd want to, but <laughs> you could. Hey, man, back off. I got, a, I got a cool dish right here we just created tonight. That's delicious. And you're right, you do need that. That acid. is insane. Isn't that good? Yeah. Simple. Very simple, very delicious. That's great. That just Well, keeps... the cheese, you notice, I mean, yeah, very specific flavor profiles in each one of his right. three ingredients, which yeah. makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, just layers of flavor. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Traditionally, a lot of Mexican food, American Mexican food, lots of cheese. Traditional Mexican food, not so much cheese. Not so much, yeah. At all. Yeah. So that's a great dish. Yeah, and not the yellow stuff. What do you got? Yeah, not the yellow stuff. So what this is the, the chorizo. Um, we did, we roasted some coal roasted, some sweet potatoes, pureed it down with just a little bit of cumin to add a little, another level of uh, flavor. That's so good. I got and then we're going to put a little chorizo on here. And then we're going to finish this one with a little bit of feta cheese. It's going to get a little bit of a tang and a little bit of saltiness. Now, that's shocking to me. You're throwing feta on there. Yeah, it's a little different. But all the flavors marry really well together, and it works. Give that. Give that a try. Give that a try. The chorizo is awesome. It's got a little kick to it, which is really nice. (laughs) Three ingredients as well, right? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, this is not coincidence, is it? it? Some of the other dishes on uh, on the menu. Yeah, so uh, our lingua, our cow tongue, that's been really popular. My other favorite is the carnitas braised pork butt. It's a really nice dish. Then we crisp it up on the plancha right before service. That's a really nice dish. I really appreciate it when a chef will take parts that w- most people are afraid of. Tripe, yeah, we're, we're doing lingua. More, the, the, I mean, the lingua's been on the menu from the food truck days, and it's always done really well. We've played around with duck tongue. We've uh, that's nice. A little bit hard to work with because it's so little. Little, yeah. But it's uh, it's got a cool flavor. That has a little heat to it. A little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah, I like the sweetness of the sweet potato. I love this. And that, Not just like I love this one. This that, is great. That might hit our brunch menu. That with an egg over it is awesome. I can see that for sure. That's fantastic. Oh, man, these everybody behind us is like, hey, when do we get to eat? It, smell, <laughs> it little, smells good in here. A little bit of food. Uh, studio Kitchen, so you're cooking over fire, right? You're cooking over fire, yeah, I love it. How about uh, fish and, and uh, beer? You're doing a lot fish of Fish and beer, a lot of our stuff's over fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a grill, maybe about, about this size, actually, but, man, our grill person, she cranks out the oysters, whole bass, octopus. We do a lobster mac and cheese, but the grill, lobster's grilled whole. And then the mac and cheese is oh, on the side. Golly. Yeah, it's a great dish. Man. Yeah. That, okay, me and you, we're going on a date, Brian, right there for that one. I like it. Uh, uh, food trucks. You start out in a food truck. Is that something out of necessity, or did you want to do that? Well, I mean, it, You know, I wanted to test the market, and it's what I had the money for. 
you know, I didn't have the money to do a brick and mortar, so uh, I sold some shares in my old company, Spicy Pickle, mm-hmm. to finance that project. Yeah. And um, found the company down in Alabama, bought a, bought a Ford F-150 on Saturday, drove down there on Sunday, and drove back that following week. And uh, got it, it wrapped, and I was in business. Seems like you move quick. When you're ready to do when I'm ready, you go. When I'm ready to go, I go. Rock and roll. It might take me a little while to get there, but once I'm there, I'm there. Are you still prepping three days a week? No. Unfortunately, I have to do some office stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, business, as you get bigger, yeah. it, it, for How some reason, it gets... How do you stay connected, gets, though? How do I stay connected? Yeah, yeah you... I'm jumping back in the kitchen. Like, my aunt, Tori's here with me. She she runs everything. She kind of... She made sure I showed up on time tonight. Without her, I without her I wouldn't be. Wait, you were here first. Okay. She came here a little. <laughs> you weren't bit. supposed to say that. <laughs> Hopefully, the guy in the studio is going to edit that out. <laughs> no, but she runs her office. She runs basically the business end of things. Mm-hmm. So she's letting me get back into the kitchen now, which is I'm grateful for. And that's where I belong. That's where I like to be. Right. That's where I'm happy. That's why I was wondering. You went through so many um, corporate changes within yourself. Yeah. Like a corporate mindset. Yeah, and you know, I. I over the years, I, as we grew, I think I found myself thinking about things too much. Mm-hmm. And then the last year, the last six months probably, it's I was talking to some uh, mentors of mine. One's my brother and some other mentors. And they're like, man, you need to just go back to the basics and keep it simple. Mm-hmm. And that's now that's what I'm doing. Gotcha. And that's where I'm happier. And it's, it's, so far, it's working out. In, biv- in business, I always talk about pivoting. Yep. No, knowing when you need to take a left turn. Yeah, you got to pivot for sure. Yeah. yeah. Some of the pivot moments in your life. Um, I, probably my biggest one, I've, ha- I've had cancer twice. Twice. So that was a big moment. It kind of made me stop and think about what I want to do. And, you, you know, life's short. You, you can never be, never take tomorrow for granted. So that was a big one, especially the sec- when it came around the second time. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I've been in remission. I mean, Ten, 10 years. Hallelujah. Well, congratulations. So, yeah, right? yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. Great. It's all good. That's great. So, every so, you know, sometimes I forget, and then once a year I go back for my check, but I'm like, yeah, I need to check myself. And Does that make you take the, your foot off the pedal or just put things in different perspective? Just put things in a different perspective. Yeah. 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 So, guys out there in this business right now that are, you know, struggling, like, do I keep the doors open? Do I close them? Uh, how do I continue? Do, am I working on the right brand? I always talk about the power of quitting. Actually, knowing when you're taking your sweat equity of something, but it's yeah. ruining your potential equity. No, it, towards I mean, something there's, else. you know, there's sometimes it's it's good to quit something. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, I have a great team, and that's who I lean on when things get hard. I just kind of we we just gather around and we talk, and it's like, hey, do we want to keep going with this brand or this concept or this location? And you know, I have a great team. I have a accounting, HR, and Tori and admin, director of ops. So it's, it's like a real get business. A, it, it, yeah, it's like it's like a grown-up business. Like I can do this for a living. It's a good one. Yeah. Expansion. Now you moved right. into Arizona. Well, we we moved in and then we moved out You're three out. years later. Yeah, you, in yeah. and out. Yeah, and that's a pivoting point. It was a good it was a good education for me and I think for my team. And it made me stop and think about how important working with good quality people is. Mm-hmm. That was our downfall. We had a great location, beautiful store. Uh, we just didn't, I didn't put the right people in the right positions. Talent and, uh, is hard. I mean, I'll tell you, these really days hard. there's yeah. a, a lot of, you know, good businesses out there. There's a lot of emerging new businesses and uh, emerging technologies all over the place. And you've got people's attention going every direction in my my eyes. Yeah. Um, so I think it's hard. I wish we had a lot more time with you tonight because I'd really like to go in the business side of where you've come from and how you, you know, transitioned out of a, you know, huge starting at a truck, going to the corporate level, coming back down to a truck, you know, in a sense. Yeah, that was my probably biggest challenge was the business end of things. That was the biggest gap. Um, a creative mind. A lot of it learned the hard way, which I'm fine yeah. with. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of it is just trial and error. Are you, you know, more of the creative type? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the book guy. You can, I'm not the one that you can vision it. I just don't know where to start to build it. Yeah, I can vision it. I, I know how to get there. Mm-hmm. I have trouble sometimes communicating my sure. thoughts, and that's why it gets frustrating, and I'm sure I frustrate my staff. Tori, and she's shaking her head. Yep, yep. Um, somehow we get there. Yeah. I don't know how. 
A lot, of, a lot of meetings at the cigar bar with a bottle of whiskey. Oh, that always works, yeah. right? Uh, so we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. Let's talk sourcing. Let's talk ingredients, the cool. importance of ingredients, and then local companies, too. Yeah. How do we support one another within our community? I think that's very important. Again, Kevin Morrison here with us. Tacos, tequila, whiskey, and fish and beer. He's assembled some great tacos. Which was your favorite, Brian? You know, I actually like the first one better. Did you? Uh, just because I, I was down I, with the second. Uh, yeah, I mean, both equally delicious, but the second one well, totally different flavors. That yeah. that second one with this little sweet potato in there, still lingering yeah. in my mouth. Oh yeah. What do we need? What are we missing? Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> you need the tequila. Okay, we're gonna break off. Come back. Do in the kitchen. Chris Johnson from Rome Sausage is gonna join us with Kevin Morrison. All's well in the world. It's a beautiful Saturday night in the doldrums of the end of fall, man. Uh, winter equinox is upon us here shortly, and then we'll get back into that winter. And then our favorite season, springtime. Springtime. And the road trip, lots going. But on. I will tell you, some of the most beautiful sunrises that we've had in a long time in last week. Uh, you would have to be up for sunrise. I know I that's a weird thing for you, isn't it? I only know one six <laughs> o'clock in the day, and that's at night. Okay, we're gonna break off. Come right back. Little Rich is in the Little Rich corner. We got two suited guys. I think they're FBI agents. I don't trust either one of them. But we'll break off and we'll come right back to Studio Kitchen, Colorado, on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. That's correct, Greg. Uh, where were you last Tuesday at 8 p.m.? We need to know. <laughs> hey, look who I've got in the corner here, Mr. John Irvin from Gluten Free Things. Welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having us on. John, now, John, you're such a strong supporter of the whole industry. You do such a great job. How are you positioning your business going into the future? Well, what we're doing is we're uh, actually, well, we're talking to you. And having you kind of help us out with trying to figure out where we want to go marketing-wise, we've decided that we're going to go through food service and do, we're going to forget about the grocery stores and that kind of stuff. We might do it, you know, if we get asked or something. Sure, sure. But uh, we have a uh, gourmet product that I think that the restaurants would really like. And, and what product is that? Well, actually, my big sellers right now are my English muffins and my pitas. And my pita pockets, which are seven inch, and people are we're, we're making the heck out of them. Well, I tell you that pancake mix and waffle mix that I had last week. If you've got a restaurant, a, a, a hotel, whatever, and you want to make gluten free pancakes, waffles, whatever, this is the guy. Try his mix; it is incredible. We're going to take a break, and you're going to be amazed at the voice you hear at the break. It sounds just like this guy. Feed me now. We're we coming back. It's the Modern Eater Show. That's right, boy. <laughs> Now it's time for In the Kitchen. How am I supposed to keep on feeding you? Kill people? Brought to you by Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Award-winning competition cooks and purveyors of specialty barbecue supplies right here in Denver, Colorado. ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Feed me all night long. Thanks, Rob. Yes. All my long right here, Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Well, at least until eight o'clock. Yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, that's uh, all all night for me. That's as the old time. guy says, you know, that's good enough. <laughs> Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman, back in Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Kevin Morrison rejoining us. Uh, chef, to tacos, tequila, whiskey, no and, no and. They're all there. Yep. There's no ands. Equally, the same. Are you selling a lot of whiskey? That, that does all right. We put yeah. the. Why would you feel? Yeah, that's. I'm a whiskey guy. Okay. I, at that time, I didn't. I didn't really wasn't a tequila guy at all. Yeah. I love tacos. I love whiskey. Well, luckily you weren't like a white claw guy. Right. Yeah, tacos, no. tequila, white no. claw. <laughs> I mean, our our product line is small, so everything we use is real. We use really high quality vendors. But yeah, whiskey because of me. I was asking the other day, uh, what are some of your favorites that out there? And you shared with us earlier your favorite tequila. If I'm yeah, buying Uno Dos Tres. Yeah, Uno and Dos even, Tres. Even if I'm buying, I'll probably, I'll probably get it. You'll throw down on yeah. that? Brian, that, what's yours? It, mine is Fortaleza. Fortaleza is good, yeah. I'm a Fortaleza guy. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, Fortaleza is really good. Chris and Jen Johnson, welcome to the show, Rome Sausage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Local it's ingredients. Good. Yeah. It's kind of fun. You fixing the microphone for her? I am. Bring it up there so she, yeah. she doesn't want to be on the mic. Is that what I'm saying? Not She's really. Why? <laughs> I'm just not a radio girl. Well, I mean, well, yeah, here's an easy question. You like tequila? I love tequila. There we go. You're a radio gal Perfect. right there. <laughs> that was easy. She's got a face for TV, and I'm more a radio guy, so it's a nice kind of symbiotic. Mix. Yeah, it's good ba- team. Balance things yeah. out. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kevin, where do you start, Chef, with uh, sourcing ingredients? I think it all starts with the conception of the, the dish. You know, you start with what is going on in the dish. Sure. 
and, and then from there you build up. You start with the bottom and build up. We started with the tortillas, and we've researched a lot of companies. We met Little Rich, mm-hmm. been with him from day one, and haven't changed. Yeah. And then from there, it's just whatever you're doing. Is it a cheese? Is sure. it a protein? Is it a vegetable? And then you just kind of figure out what season, you know, obviously you know what season right. you're in, but then you kind of assemble the dish from there. And relationships are a lot, too. Relationships are huge, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. We've been with vendors. Uh, years and you know, years. I mean, I've been self-employed for 20 years. So I work with some of the same vendors. Exactly. So that's nice. It's great to hear. So yeah, when really and, and thank you, because we said, Rome Sausage is going to be in the house tonight. Hey, Chef, do you mind doing this? And it's kind of a funky little thing, because it's like, all right, I already use sausage yeah. from somebody else. But I'm glad I got, I'm glad. Chris is here today because, you know, he's opening my eyes to some new stuff and, and gives me some new ideas. So Great point, awesome. because I wanted to actually uh, expound upon that. So a lot of times you're in your own little bubble. Yeah, it, it's you easy know? to get tunnel vision. Sure. And that's why you have to get out and, you know, the Internet makes it easy to research new products. Now. Uh-huh. I mean, you can go anywhere in the world that's sitting at your desk or in your bed or wherever. Um, but traveling, no, nothing's like being there and touching it and feeling it and eating it. Truly. Uh, but, yeah, it's just trying new products. Yeah. And then from then, it just sparks your innovation. Yeah, Chris, what do you do with that? Uh, you know, you've got your relationships with folks, obviously, right. all over the place. But cultivating new relationships, kind of cool to talk to Kevin tonight. And Absolutely, maybe have the man. I mean, you know, it makes my heart feel good because we're producing soulful, you know, straightforward, you know, products in the small batch scenario. And it, uh, it's nice to, to find guys who appreciate that. And, you know, I think we're a company that's set up uh, in a way that we need to, you know, reach chefs, you know, bring items to them and go, hey, look, this isn't the normal stuff. This isn't the normal, like, run-of-the-mill, mass-produced stuff. We're making great stuff here. It fits what you're doing. Let's let's move forward kind of thing. Talk about it. Yeah. And and so you do that a lot. And I said Mrs. Sausage to you tonight. She's like, do I hit him or do I embrace (laughs) that? You're Mr. Sausage. You you guys live this. This is your life. Right. You love this type of thing. Um, This was perfect for me. Good taste. I'd I'd be interested to taste the original, I guess, I would say. This is really good. Is it really good? Re- yeah, that's why we're talking after the show. This is really good. <laughs> and is that really what it comes down to? Because a lot of times, b- regardless of relationships and accessibility, which are big a lot of times, sometimes you just go, mm, I can't be without that. That's pretty good. Yeah, sometimes when you get introduced to a product, it, it just you fall in love with it and your imagination just takes off. And you're like, i got to work with that product or that company. Mm-hmm. What's new with you? We've been swamped, man. And I, and I was telling Rich on the break that uh, – We've seen a lot of folks come to us and say, hey, we want you to produce our meatball or our sausage or this or that because uh, we're having a hard time getting consistent product out and we're worried about the minimum wage increase. We've got to find somebody who can make this consistently in the same kind of hands-on, small batch, quality-centered uh, scenario that we do. Um, so that's been a blessing for us um, as far as that business coming our way. So, And your offerings are vast. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we always say yes when the phone rings. What, what type of things are you selling right now? Uh, we're doing um, a hand-rolled meatball for an Italian chain here. It's got five stores. And the founder of the company told me the other day, older guy, he shook my hand. He's like, hey, man, you saved my business. I'm like, well, that's high praise, but thank you. It's just a meatball, you know. Um, and uh, we're doing some uh, custom Italian sausage, and we're going to do a burger blend for a, 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 a quick-moving uh, burger concept. Uh, so we're rocking and rolling, man. Building new relationships. Mm-hmm. I know oh, Aspen Baking's a new relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do a little bit with those guys. They, they're doing some catering. Uh, they have a catering division, so we do uh, some patties uh, for the folks over at Aspen. So yeah. good people. Kevin, what are you looking for? What would you like to find? Is there anything I'd out there? I'd love to find something that no one else has. Yeah. Which, you know, that, is there anything? I don't think there's No, there's, there's not nothing. Anything. Did you know this is going to be a sales call live on the air? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Not, not as far as, as sausage goes, but just yeah. anything ingredient in general. Mm-hmm. Well, it, you know, something's interesting, and we've got to go to break here. But what's interesting is is how do we process the foods? The other day I was looking at something, and it, it, somebody froze something before they gave it to me. Uh-huh. And I'm like, what if you did that on purpose? As opposed to, because, you know, some, sometimes you can freeze a tomato or something like yeah, that. Right, 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 right. Peel the skin or something. You know, but there's different things, and that's where I wonder if something's going to come new out of that because of the way we handle it or some post, mm. post-harvest post processing. Of, yeah, that's a good point. I'm sure there are. I mean, there's so many chefs out there that really push the edge, especially with, um, um, uh, what is it called? Um, the cooking with uh, chemicals where they freeze things. Hold oh. that thought. 
We'll be back. Look who I've got with me. We've got the at the top of the hour. I got one of my favorites, Jordan, and this guy watched. He he covered my you know what for a long time. Jordan, I want to give you the mic. I want you to hold it about there. Is this thing on? Yeah, it's it's on. Check okay. check check check. Great, great. So Jordan and I go way back, and I'm really excited to have him on because he's got a service that a lot of you really really need. And the fact is, you may not even know how bad you need it. So, oh, let's circle back now. So, Jordan, tell us what you're doing now. Um, that's right, Rich. So, I, I have an audio and video uh, company. Uh -huh. And so, what I do is help residential and commercial businesses install audio, video, and basically anything that's not a kitchen appliance, I'll put my hands on. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, cameras, network wiring for point of sale systems, That's correct. Um, wireless, so setting up an office network and a guest network, audio, video, so your music, your televisions. Um, I'm a Comcast authorized reseller, so I can I, can I didn't even know that. Guys, I can set you guys up with Comcast as well. Oh my um, gosh! And yes, like I said, basically anything that's not a kitchen appliance, I'll put my hands on. Well, and I'll tell you what's important is Jordan knows this, but how he's he's wired. He's a technical guy. I mean, he's very meticulous. Jordan is who set up our quality control program at Rock Elitis. He was our right hand, my right hand, for many years. I know how meticulous this man is. And so it's one thing to just come in and say, hey, we're going to put a receiver over there and some speakers over there, and we'll make it work. It's another where someone who really knows the equipment, who really knows how to engineer it, and really knows how to install it. You're going to get it. It's going to be in. It's going to work. It's going to do what he tells you it's going to do. That's what he did for me for four years. Exactly. And so so when he went into this field, well, working at Rockalitas, he kind of knew a couple good places. So some, what are some of the places well, that you've so, done um, work so, with? So absolutely. So uh, Kevin over at Tacos Tequila Whiskey, uh, Bacon Social House. Um, <laughs> Uh, some of Frank Bonanno's restaurants, the Milk Market, um, a lot of the little pub group restaurants, and that's just awesome. a few of my, uh, my my restaurants that are customers. Wow. On top of the other businesses and then the residential customers. And he can set it up. I mean, you did it for us, Jordan. Um, uh, you, you can watch these camera systems mm -hmm. anywhere. That's right. Yeah, from anywhere in the world. All yeah. you have to have is an Internet connection and your phone, and you can yeah. log in and kind of monitor how things are going. And a lot of times, you know, it's not that you're trying to spy on your employees on, on our I'll tell you what happened at Rockalitas. We would have distributors come in picking up a semi load of product. They would get the product back and say uh, we didn't get 20 pallets we only got 19. Remember that happened several times and so we were able to get the clip real easy. Even I could do it. That's scary that I could do that. But we would send them the clip and it was like oh yeah, you loaded it up, and they magically found the pallet. That's right. So, you know, in the restaurant business, obviously you're not dealing with pallets, but you are dealing with now you can confirm that your good, that your outstanding help is truly giving them service. Right. You can make sure that people aren't being overserved. You can watch time when somebody says, I sat down and it took this long and all this other stuff. You can confirm. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's more than just spying on your people. It's really being able to confirm what a great job they're doing. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So with the cameras and then on top of the cameras, I forgot to mention the acoustic treatments. Which, this is important. Which is such a huge, which is such a huge part of what I do for restaurants. So the audio is important. The video is important. So if you're a sports bar, we want to have TVs. We want to have the, the, the games all playing. But what's becoming an issue is that with this design trend where we're getting rid of carpet, we're getting rid of drapes, we're getting rid of uh, ceiling treatments, we're going with exposed uh, concrete, we're going with exposed um, ceiling. Yep. We need acoustic treatments to yep. battle that. Yeah. And so that's a big part of what I do as well, is to go in, coach, install, sell, maintain everything, one-stop shop, and make sure that these people are set up. This, I, I mean, truly, what you do helps helps that get you that five star uh, Yelp review. Absolutely. Although I don't don't even let's not even get started on Yelp. 
but you help the overall experience. You help the operations of it. Right. Don't overlook this. It's more than just putting up a radio and a couple speakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a much, much more. And the soundproofing, that is huge. You're absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a big part. And people are noticing now that that's more important than ever. We, we're yeah. piping in more sound. We're taking away all of the natural yeah. uh, acoustic treatments like the carpet, yeah. like the drapes, like the ceiling tiles. And now... Yeah. We it's could just, use some of that here. <laughs> I think we're going to have to have a talk after this. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, Jordan, I've watched the segment, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is exactly what I've needed. I know it. I need to get this done. How do they jump in? Where do they contact you? How do they get a hold of you? I would say uh, visit my website, please, www.jtechso.com. Okay, wait, I, I got... I got 12 fingers. What is that again? <laughs> www.j, the letter J, okay. T-E-C-H, S is in Sam, O is in Oscar, dot com. That's awesome. Reach out. Get, let him give you a, a review of what. All right, second hour of the Modern Eater Show continues from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Welcome back. Greg Collin back and Brian Freeman. Yes, indeedy. In the kitchen. Saturday Night Live. I like the second hour. You get Rocky you Mountains. Catch your stride. Okay, I figured uh, one is good, but twice is nice. Very nice. I think I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Morrison rejoining us. There you are, Chef. This would yeah. be kind of cool. I kind of I want you here. Mike Fogarty, you guys just met today. Mike Fogarty, yeah, Choice yeah. Market. We're going to be neighbors. Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. Golden Triangle, is that? No, which one? No, Colfax. Colfax. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Caddy Corner. Have you been into a Choice Market? I have not. I have to go in. Haven't been in. Have you been into? Um... I was telling them it's my favorite taco spot. <laughs> I've, been, I've been eating his restaurant for, I used to live on 20th in York. Pull so that mic close. Oh, sorry. <laughs> here you know. Yeah, I mean, I was at 21st in York for quite a while, so I would walk down to pinch it. Or, sorry. By the original, the OG. <laughs> the OG, yeah. The OG. Yeah. So very, well, because it was, right? It was It was here, called, because I was there when it was pinch yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we, we said it. We done. We pulled the Band-Aid off. First, it's first, done. We'll send you the bill. We'll, yeah, we'll see what the FCC we'll says it. about we'll that. Uh, Brian uh, the bill. <laughs> he, he's the bold one. <laughs> All right. We'll continue on here. Uh, so I- here's the deal. We, we wanted to kind of break off with you in a proper way. First of all, thank Thank you for all of your help tonight. Yeah, thanks Since for beginning of the me, show. It was fun. A little bit rocky, but you know we continue on. That's how we do things in everything, it's in life. business and in life. life. You just continue on. But I thought it'd be cool. Do you want to just talk uh, some business here and see what yeah, he's sure. going on with him? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think it's kind of cool. So Choice Market started with first location. Yeah, first location opened in uh, October 2017. We've been open for about uh, two years, obviously. And uh, you know, really, it's a combination of a of a convenience store, a fast casual restaurant, and a, and a natural grocery, really. And it's, uh, but it's all about convenience, you know, getting people good food that's accessible and convenient. And uh, we're one location now, or our first location opened at 18th and Broadway. And then we have our second location that just opened at 10th and Osage about a month ago. And two more planned uh, for next year. So you know, things, are, things are going good. You can tell that's you've correct. traveled. Quite a bit, kind of the bodega style. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Philly originally. So I spent a lot of time in New York, you know. So the, the bodega, for sure, was near and dear to my heart. Um, but I also spent time in Europe. So they have these awesome small markets almost on every corner, and like that was a big inspiration for choices. I want to be able to get in and get out in like 10 to 15 minutes, but still get really high quality food. And, uh, you know, that doesn't really exist in America. You have a 100,000-square-foot grocery store and a 2,500-square-foot convenience store that's selling junk. There's really nothing in between. And for us, we've, we saw a gap in the market, and, and that's you know, well, what we're doing. Yeah, he cares about his sourcing, though. I think that yeah. that's one thing that's, that's really different because you are you are a little little place, very convenient if you're downtown. I mean, your first stop where I, where I fe- frequent. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you, but you care. I mean, oh, yeah. talk about that. You, you really search out good ingredients, Mike. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's, it's, for us, local is quintessential to the brand. You know, it's not just checking the box. Hey, distributor, give me everything from Colorado. I mean, we're out at the farmer's markets. We're out meeting new purveyors. We're bringing them in. And, and honestly, for some folks, we're the first place that they, they're selling their products. And, you know, so it's, it's an education process for them, honestly, because some don't have barcodes. <laughs> you know, they, they're just producing this awesome food, and they're like, how do I, you know, get to a retail you know, market? And so we kind of help them go through that process and, like, educate them on what's required 
to but like why, sell. Mike? It's so much easier. Why? One truck can drop yeah, yeah. off everything you need, and you, and you got one bill and not a million SKUs, yeah. and you don't need to take on all the problems of the world and try and support a local. Like, why? Uh, I mean, ultimately, you know, we care. We do care about the community that we operate in, and we care that the products we're serving to our, our customers are high quality, and usually, you know, our, all of our produce are organic. Thanks, Brian. Uh, you, you know, uh, all of our proteins are antibiotic-free, hormone-free, and, and we're constantly looking at the menu and adjusting the menu to meet the needs of the neighborhood that we're in. You know, the first store at 18th and Broadway, the, the menu there is very different than Mariposa. You know, Mariposa, I don't know how many people know, but it's a, it's a mixed-income neighborhood, but it's predominantly low-income. So there we're doing $3 tacos. We're doing, you know, all sorts of... Play to the crowd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we want choice to be is like really meeting the needs of the neighborhood and using local products whenever possible because you know, it's just a ripple effect. It's calling me a convenience store. Is that an insult? <laughs> well, I mean, Truly, I, I want to know. I want to know the answer. I, well, we are convenient. You know, and I think I don't think convenience stores these days are convenient. They're selling you crap you don't want or need. You know, cigarettes, junk food, and now gas. That's the three top selling categories for convenience stores. And guess what? People are smoking less, they're eating less junk food, and, and cars are moving to electric. So that whole market and the whole, the whole industry needs to change. So you're turning it on its ear. It's yeah. almost like you're changing the lexicon. Yeah, just because you're open doesn't sense. make you convenient, all right? You're yeah. still selling crap I don't want. Yeah. You know? so, um, and, and so for us, we, we turn it on its head, and, you know, we are convenient because we're selling high-quality produce, uh, you know, raw proteins, dairy, eggs, milk, you know, all your, your essentials. Um, now, is that sustainable or is that just something for somebody that's in a pinch? I'm going to go to Choice because I'm in a pinch. Or will I do my grocery shopping there? I, you know, most people don't do a week's worth of grocery shopping at Choice. They fill in their basket, through, you know. So they they do primary, you know, their primary grocery shop wherever, at Whole Foods or Amazon or a combination of both. Uh, but we fill in the gaps, you know, and, and that's what it's meant to be. And what's nice is we cook with the product we sell, you know. So, as I said, all of our produce are organic, but we cook on the on the back of the house with that product. So for us, it's just like a storage location. Might as well sell it. Yeah. yeah. Kevin, well, put it, your that, talk show yeah. cap on. Put your talk <laughs> show yeah, host no, cap on. I love on. what he's doing, yeah. especially in this market because it's such a foodie market. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we're we're going, we're trying to source more local, more organic. We're paying more attention to the ingredients in raw products like our our cows or pigs you know we're looking for stuff that's free range no gmos we're looking for things like that because the market demands it yeah, that's, that's what i was gonna ask is it yeah. you or is the market want it I, well for i mean for choice it's the both i mean i prefer to eat organic produce yeah so i don't eat organic everything but produce dairy there's certain ca like things and i think most people eat like that they they shop at Whole Foods, but they also shop at King Supers. Fill in know? the blanks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think for us, you know, yeah, ultimately, it's, we're a customer-centric company. We will, we will adjust and, and migrate to whatever the customer desires. And, and so at the end of the day, it's all about the customer. And our customer, they, they love vegan. They love organic. They love local. And, and we're going to continue to do that. Provide it for them. Yeah. yeah. Kevin, vegan. I, yeah, I'm shaking my head. Yeah, because yeah. vegan, it's four years ago, I said I'm never going to have a vegan dish in the menu. <laughs> yeah. Now I have one, and we're actually adding, we're in, the, we're in a menu development stage. We're adding two more vegan dishes. So we'll have three vegan dishes. We're participating in a, um, a program called Vegan Vegan Wary uh -huh. in, in January. Is it really? For our three taco restaurants, we're all going to feature a dish for the whole month uh -huh. um, for vegan. It's, yeah. it's so popular, and yeah. and it's it's very it's a cult following as, as well. Oh yeah, it's you, cult they'll for sure. they'll come to you. Yeah, it used to be a niche market, and now I mean it, it grew six hundred percent in the past three years. So I mean. It went from 1% of the, the whole population in America to 3 yeah. or some, something like that. It, like, phenomenal growth. And, like, we see it every day because, like, we have upwards, I, I don't even know the number, probably 30% of our menu is, is vegan. Well, it's interesting because yeah. there's more of these specialty niche diets. I mean, because, like, yeah. look at all the people. Keto, there's the keto right. and all that. Yeah. But then you go to the gluten-free side, and, you know, we've got John yeah. from Gluten-Free Things on later. It is really interesting because we're seeing those segments, like you said. I mean, I have a joke for you guys about veganism. I don't know. We've, we've had this discussion on the show before, but the concept that everything grows in manure. 
<laughs> um, really could throw the whole idea yeah. of being a vegan on its side Upside because down. everything does. I, I yeah. did work well, with this. Well, honey, we did, honey's not vegan. We, yeah, we yeah did, we I know. Did, we did the goat experiment. And more and more these days, it's really interesting because people are not only interested in the food that they put into their body and the integrity of that food, but they're now interested in the integrity of the food that their food eats. Oh. Yeah, for sure. It, it, it blows my mind. Someone asked somebody the other day, "Were those? Uh, was there any soy in the diet?" Oh, chicken and chicken feed. If there's soy in diets, it's yeah. some people it's, swear. But you know, I was asking someone about this gluten free. If you feed a chicken wheat, and I went on the internet and it says no, but I don't know. I, I don't know if I believe uh, that because if you feed it wheat, is our eggs? Then have gluten in them. Yeah, people are digging into that. I mean, that we have a more sophisticated, educated customer than ever. You know, yep. and, and that it, it get generationally is getting more and more. Like Gen Z folks that come into Choice, they know more about food and what they're putting in their body than any. any and they're gen- willing to spend a lot of their income on it. Yeah, exactly. They're well. willing to pay extra yeah. for no, you know, for whether it be vegan or local, whatever. Yeah. I mean, and and you know that. Trend, it's, not, it's not even a trend. I mean, that truly is the shift in, in food. Like, yeah. I mean, that's personalization, customization, like all that stuff. Is oh, I want to get into that. Yeah. Kevin, what are your shopping habits? Grocery shopping for the delivery. week? You, is it delivery? <laughs> I, I eat. I uh, get delivery a lot. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so already made delivery. You're not getting, Chinese like, drop pizza. from. Okay, so no. not like Amazon drop. No, to or you. I shop at my restaurants. Yeah. Gotcha. Wait, like, you're in food. I mean, food. So, like, tomorrow I'm going to my brother's sure. to watch the games, and I'm just going to stop there, and whatever we have, we have. Yeah. I'm taking some bass. I'm taking some oysters. I'm taking some shrimp. So, um, so but I've switched my, my shopping habits. I'm, I'm paying more attention to non-processed foods and what's in the food. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe because I'm old. Have you ever had a weight problem? If, yeah, I have a weight no, problem. You did? No, yeah. you're lying. No, I did. <laughs> Luckily, I think my apron's covering up. But no, I, um, I'm eating less gluten, which is, which has helped dramatically. Yeah. And I cut out the sodas. I, I should say I cut down on the sodas. I still, mm-hmm. when I'm at work, it's too easy with a gun of Coca-Cola right <laughs> yeah. there. So I love Coca-Cola. But no, I, I watch what I eat. Yeah. Guys, let's come. Let's talk late night business. More, I think it, Denver's graduating into that. And I think it's really kind of untapped. Ghost Kitchen. Are you familiar? Yeah. What a ghost kitchen yeah, is? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Doing a ghost kitchen out of their choice downtown. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, chicken Kitchen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Chicken Kitchen. Yep. Just all chicken sandwiches. Yeah. And send them out. And fries. And, oh, I uh, want in on this. <laughs> and uh, ice cream I got a chicken concept I'm working on. Okay. You mind sticking around? We'll talk about this? All right. All right. Let's 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 come back and talk to it. I think it's great. And Mike Fogarty, Choice Market. I think you're an innovator, and the things that you're doing, um, just, you, you're cutting that road towards the future. And you're melding these things in Denver that I'm glad that they're sticking. I wasn't sure yeah. if, if we were ready for these types of concepts. But you're proving... Um, you're proving that point to be true, that it, that it, that it is. Uh, that Colfax location I want to talk about as well, that's just in gestation right now being put together. But you're doing some new things there as well. Yep. A, a, a fueling station? Yeah. What? Yeah. Stop. Hold it there. All right. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Brian Freeman, Greg Holland back on the microphone here in Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Kevin Morrison, tacos, tequila, whiskey, and fish and beer. Chef, how's that doing on the grill? I think it's done. <laughs> Good to go. All right, we'll take a break. Come back. Mike Fogarty, Choice Market, right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Take it away. Oh, this is an unusual segment for me, Greg. It's like trying to write with my left hand. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm out of the norm here. But I've got our newest sponsors, Meridium Spirits. I've got Alex. This is awesome. So they, they came on a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take the generous liberty of saying they fell in love with what we're doing. We want to be a part of this. Of course. And they drank the Kool-Aid or vodka, as, as you can see. And so we're going to do, they're gonna, there's, the spots will start running after the first of the year. This is going to be so much fun. Thank we're going to have a blast. And go ahead, Alex. Uh, she's going to add Meridium Spirits onto the wall of sponsors. And I'm not going to write it because my handwriting, no one would, would know what it is. And I'm left-handed, so I just smear it. <laughs> 
Oh my God! I think we've got a new jo- a new task for you. That's way better than Greg's writing. Holy cow! Well, welcome. If people want to jump on fast, where do they get a hold of you? Uh, we're at MeridianSpirits.com. We're also on Instagram and Facebook. Awesome. We're going to be back in just a few. Listen to some words from Encore Energy. They cook grain. They should be using Encore. We'll be back. Yo, yo, what's up? <laughs> this is Justin Brunson, Ultra Meat and Cheese in Denver Central Market. I'm a meat guy. <laughs> and you're listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Chef's uh, passing out some delicious fish and forks. It's family style tonight at the kitchen, Brian. <laughs> I'll tell you, all the food tonight has just, it's just like every night. It's always great, but tonight, I know. I can't tell you. They're, they're, some, they're cooking some of the things dear to my heart tacos. I told you, deep down, I am Mexican. I know deep you down, are, Brian. I am. I can see. I, I mean, you know, I'm, I, I can't get any whiter, but I, inside, I'm not. Redder? I'm, redder? I, you're redder, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am like. I am truly the red man, always. <laughs> yes, but you uh, are. Continuing on, Kevin Morrison, tacos, tequila, whiskey. And then fish and beer. It's not all one sentence. Tacos, tequila, whiskey, fish, and beer. Could be. Who knows? <laughs> it might, Who knows? It might be coming you up. You never know what we're going to do. And Mike I want to know where the tea comes it. from. Where does the tea come from in KTM? The middle, What's middle that? name. Middle, middle name. name. Oh. Tenacious. Tenacious. Yeah. Nice. That's, a, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> no, it's Tom. You got it. Is it Tom? Yeah. Thomas. Yeah, yeah. Right? Kevin Thomas. Uh, we're breaking off when we're talking. Okay, first of all, I don't want to give my opinion. I think people hear my opinions all the time. We'll just do a little round robin. Uh, Denver's growth to the point now of where are we a 24-hour city? Go ahead. Ken. Honestly, I don't think we're there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I think we're about till maybe 2, 2 a.m. I, I, mean, I don't think just we my... have the infrastructure yet as far as delivery. You go to some place like Chicago. And there are so many delivery. They've got that down. And, you know, when you have office buildings, you're supplying. There's a food truck almost on right. every other street there. Go to you, Fogarty. You're seeing it, though, right now. Yeah, I mean, we started out as 24 hours, so I have a very unique perspective on it. I mean, we did it for a year. Um, and, and certainly there was, you know, peaks and valleys during that 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. time frame. Um, Ultimately, I agree. I don't think we're quite there at a 24-hour city. Moving there. Yeah, moving sure. there. Yeah, sure. I think we're moving there. I mean, yeah. right I would it, love to see it's it. It's inevitable. I'd love to you see it. Think. So we cut the hours back to 3. You know, uh, so we're basically 6 a.m. to 3 a.m. And, and, you know, we do see significant business at 2 a.m. because we all know what happens at 2 a.m. I mean, the bar's let out and, you know, not everybody wants pizza, you know, because that's literally the only thing available. Um, you know, so for us, we see significant business in the late night area. We call late night anything after ten, really, because that's generally when most uh, restaurants close. Mm-hmm. So for us, it's, it's a huge part of our business, no doubt. I mean, it's uh, the delivery, especially during that time frame, is, is you know, it's could be upwards of thirty to forty percent of the business for that day. You know? Now I'm guilty of two aming you. <laughs> I have given you that late night yeah. call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's. Uh, you know, people still you know want to eat. <laughs> well, and good food because I'll tell yeah, you, like yeah. you, you just said, once it once you get past uh, really ten eleven o'clock, yeah. good food. All bets are off. Yeah, it's and it, it's it, it's sad. It's options, well, I mean, it's options get real small. real small. Real and, small. And um, if you want good food, especially, yeah, for sure. I mean, like if you want organic food after ten o'clock. You're, but you're probably not going to get it anywhere but choice. I mean, should you be able to get it though? I mean, people say don't be picky at two a.m. You're lucky to be eating anything at all. Well, you know, the market what? demands yeah. it though. I mean, yeah. especially yeah. the younger generation, they they demand it for sure. They're used to Uber. Every, everything's on demand. Well, like we were saying earlier, is I I didn't say this, but about Generation Z, Gen Z, yeah. they eat out five times yeah. a week yeah. versus the old norm was three. So they pushed it up. Is that true? Yes. That is. That is a real stat. Ridiculous. I mean, there's a study that was done by UNC, and it, it started, like, in 1960, and it looked at, you know, food ver- cooked in home in the home versus food, you know, at a restaurant. And, and, and in the 60s, it was, like, 95% food was cooked at home. And, you know, they looked at the trends, and this is across every income class, like, low, medium, high. You know, fast forward to 2010, 50 years later, and it's in the 70s. You know, 70% cooked at home, 30% eaten out. So this is a, a whole-scale mass migration towards you know, eating out. You know, it, 
convenience is king, uh, and it will continue to be. Well, not everybody. You know, there's third shifters now. People aren't. This is a 24-hour world. You're working at all different times. You're not just 9 to 5. People's shifts are all over the place. I think Denver's moving that direction, and, and guys like you are setting that infrastructure, truly. The ghost kitchen concept, I, I love it personally. At first, at first, set it up. How do you explain a ghost kitchen? Yeah, it, uh, yeah it's real humans working. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but in general, I, I think... One, Wait, now it's not as cool anymore. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I mean, ghost kitchens you know, are, have come around in the past couple of years, and basically it was designed for... You know, new companies and entrepreneurs that want to, you know, go forward with a, a concept of some sort but don't have the capital. And, you know, they start, you know, serving out of a commissary kitchen. And so there's there's a couple companies out there, Kitchen United, Cloud Kitchens, a bunch of others that saw this and saw the, the migration to people eating, you know, m- mostly at home via, via whatever their preferred app is. And, and they saw an opportunity basically to say, like, well, can we get these you know, entrepreneurs into a kitchen to, to trial their, their concepts before they go and buy a piece of land or, or rent from a, from a you know, landlord, you know, the CapEx intensive type stuff. And so, you know, cloud kitchens, ghost kitchens are kind of talked about in one and the same, but in, in essence, it, it, it is a commissary that's all delivery, basically, and it's you know you can't go into the yeah. Restaurant. You're not going in. No. You probably don't even know where it's at. Yeah, no, oh, definitely, and it's yeah. usually in a, in a low rent, you know, industrial part of town, right? And it's fulfilled by either you know Uber Eats or Postmates or any one of the, yeah. the third parties. Um, yeah, and we you know we got approached by Uber to to, to to do a ghost kitchen out of our existing restaurant. So they approached we, you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so they um, you know you okay. have to meet certain criteria. You have uh-huh. to have like a certain amount of ratings and be willing to give them half of your money. I mean, that, <laughs> that's only a third. Don't worry. Oh, it's only a third. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because okay. yeah. uh, margins aren't as tight. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> but in general, our, our ghost kitchen is, is it's a it's a fried chicken sandwich. Yeah, you know. chicken kitchen. Yeah, so it's all fried chicken it. sandwiches. That's awesome. French Are you down fry? with the chicken? Pardon me? You down with chicken? Yeah. Yeah. I love chicken. I love chicken. Too. Everybody loves chicken. I'm, th- yeah. I'm starting to figure out what your next move is going to be there. I love it. You got, hey, uh, Mexican sh- concept. Hey, chefs, chicken. have you guys ever heard of, uh, it's Jay here in case you're watching and then got confused. Uh, have you guys ever heard of Cook's Venture? No. Cook's Venture is a new chicken place that Chef Carrie Baird over Bardo uses. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, next week. I'm trying to get somebody from there, but at least their representative for that. They're gonna, but apparently, you know, it's just food for thought, a little homework. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cook's Venture is like the hottest thing in chicken, to where they're doing everything incredibly uh, thoughtful in the way of the environment, the chicken. You know, they read to them. You know, the whole the whole thing like that. <laughs> oh, it's not a chicken kicking operation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chicken kicking operation, man. Those are <laughs> terrible. I, I really like the free range chickens. And I'll throw something at you. New, new concept penguin. Have you ever seen those things? They have so much meat. They're just like one little big sausage. They look good on the rotisserie. Yeah, I think they'd be perfect. I, little penguin, you know? I mean, people don't, uh, eat uh, people don't eat them. Why not? I don't know. Why not? I'm guessing it's reason. red meat. I don't know why I'm thinking red meat. And a lot of blubber. And, and, and far away. It's, uh, yeah. and it's sourcing. It's Sourcing's chain. tricky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stick around. We have another segment with you, gents, and we're going to come back. I want to talk about that Colfax location because I think it's a, a cool idea, and I know I teased it before, yeah. but uh, doing fuel cool. out of that location. All right, we'll come back, take a break. Kevin Morrison here with us alongside of our friend Mike Fogarty from Choice Market. Choice, where'd you go? You just want the choice? Where'd you come up with the name? Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's a double entendre, like choice in terms of I want the choice. how you order yeah. and like when you come in. And, and uh, then it's like, that's choice. Yeah. Man. Like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, primo. The pre- exactly. As it relates to food, like yeah, Ferris Bueller's, you ever see that? That's yeah. choice. choice. That's <laughs> choice. Exactly. So, yeah. so one of my first companies, actually, Right, right Choice. Yeah. Oh, right yeah. choice was the name of it. Which yeah. happens in the little rich corner with the the screaming uh, chicken. Is he going to fire <laughs> that off? All right, let's go to little rich in the little rich corner. Thanks, Greg. Another strong segment. And you know, when you talk about loving chicken, <laughs> this is from Cancun. I brought this back. Did you? Yeah. Uh, lucky you. Huh? I know. This is this is what happens when we get. I don't know when we're bad. Kevin, thanks for coming yeah, down, brother. Thanks, thanks for being you. 
I can't be anyone else. You you've helped so many. I mean, uh, when I think of, of you, may you bent the the Mexican food universe in this town. I know it because I've been in it that long. I know what you did. Well, I just uh, I got a small role in what I do, and I love what I do, and <laughs> it's all I know. So well, we'll keep you, doing it. I mean, you've taught others, uh, but you you've stayed consistent. Your quality has never dipped. I, I mean, I was at your restaurant about a week ago. The tacos have never been better. That's why we keep it simple, man. It's it's you know the quality's got to be there. You're you're making it work. You're an inspiration. You're I got to tell you. Though. You're, they're the canvas. They're the canvas, man. I always tell everybody. Well, thank you. But, I mean, you know, Rawl, my brother, yeah, love Marty. Him. Love him. We're yeah. always talking about you. We're very indebted to you, my friend. Thank You've you. helped us it's tremendously. Been a great partnership and friendship. Well, keep keep making it and keep making those chicken tacos. <laughs> uh, we'll be back in just a few seconds. To the show from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, the modern eater continues. Greg Holland back. Brian Freeman. Little Rich Schneider, the ham over there. Brought, look at the, the the bench that he brought. The, his TV tray? Yeah, his TV yeah. tray. <laughs> that was quite the addition to the kitchen there, Little Rich. Full value. Watch us on Facebook. Um, just go to themoderneater.com. Got these gents here with us. And uh, it's Matt, right? Matt Smith? Is that who I'm looking at here? I think I can see That is Matt yeah. Smith. Yes. Hey, Matt. How Welcome, Matt. Along with uh, Mike Fogarty, yep. Choice Market. The gents are here. And uh, I understand that you actually gave him a promotion today. Yeah, I, well, it's been <laughs> long on the way. <laughs> yeah, we're as we grow, obviously, there's opportunities for, for people to grow within the business. And uh, Mike, who's our current GM, is moving on to the Colfax location, which I think we're going to talk about. Yes. And, and Matt's going to take over Broadway, the OG number one choice. OG number one choice. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Greg, you know what? Mike is really a smart businessman because what he did is so important, I think, in a grocery aspect. Because there's one thing that a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of people don't get. In this kind of concept where you have fresh and perishable, you've got to have a second life. It's yeah, got to, yeah. yeah, you've got to have your, your, and what Mike does is so smart. Because, you know, you walk into some of these new grocery stores, I don't like the fact that there's not a deli. There's no prepared foods. I, and you go over, you travel around the world and stuff like that. And every place, if you have, you have a second dairy use for everything yeah. in there. Well, there's a certain market that has opened up just recently, and the waste of produce is very high yeah. with that. Now, for you, that's great. We were talking about that the other day. To be able to have that kitchen behind you um, is fantastic to be able to keep the, the quality of products uh, yeah, for your customers. It's, it's quintessential, honestly. like for, for most folks, to order a case of avocados, it's really really tough to get through 60 before they before they spoil and you know we as i said we serve all organics on the, on the produce side so you know it, it adds up very yep. quickly and you know and that's why a lot of like op, you know there's been a lot of like opportunities for like convenience stores and corner stores to like start serving produce but like it just doesn't work it doesn't yeah. because you know they can't sell 60 avocados yeah. in in a week or, or eight you know four yeah. or five days and you're like bring on the guac yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, we we only sell um, you know on the on the front of the house products that we cook with in the back of the house. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk food, you, man. You're do, so you do switchover menus as well. So choice market again. If you guys are just joining us, um, we were talking about the OG market downtown, right by the uh, Brown Palace. Thank you so much. <laughs> that it's an interesting concept because you have your market, you have all. And I, I said to him as I was walking through the store. Man, you pick out all the stuff at all the grocery stores that I go to, and you put them in one place because this is truly all the stuff that I love. Just down to the the Justin's peanut butter. Cups. Are you a Gen Z and uh, <laughs> deep down am, or something like it, that? It's uh, good stuff, and you know, if you need them, you know, pick up some condoms yeah. too. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you got them all, everything yeah. there. We got I think condoms, we, we got chargers, we got you know uh, everything you need, dish, and dish detergent. a delicious kitchen. Yeah. And coming out of the kitchen are these great. Uh, menu items that you switch seasonally. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Talk about it. Yeah, so we have a, we have a core menu that we definitely have all year round. Like we have our fried chicken sandwich, we have an Impossible Burger, we have our kale Caesar salad. So we have stuff that is always on the menu. Um, but especially with our bowls, we we rotate that seasonally. You know, traditionally, it's been three times a year to follow the produce season. So you know, spring, and then harvest, and then a winter winter season. And so. What's awesome is we get to play with all these great ingredients and come up with new dishes that are LTOs or limited time offers for, you know, that season, so three, four months. And, and so Matt's making right now 
uh, one of our dishes that's going to be on the, the winter menu, which launches on Monday. Uh, and, and it's uh, this is not vegan. This is vegan. This is not vegan. Hundred <laughs> percent. This is a meatball looking at yeah. with red sauce it, with ricotta. It's, yeah, this can't be. Hundred percent vegan. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. So I mean, and this is what's cool, and how you can like create a really good product that's that is vegan or gluten free and still tastes good. And, and so. Uh, we have spaghetti squash, uh, organic spaghetti squash, squash sorry, uh, a, a meatball made with impossible meat, as well as mushrooms, uh, and turmeric, and a few other spices, uh, with a cashew ricotta. So the ricotta is blended oh, up uh, in a in, in a Vitamix with uh, nutritional yeast and a few other things. It really gives that like cheesy flavor. And then we have uh, some awesome, um, beautiful shard from from growers that we. Uh, Mixed with lemon and garlic. So. How do you? So yeah, you, you need breadcrumbs for that. I mean, no, you do not. Uh, you I don't need any gluten well, did, in there. Did you use? Did you use breadcrumbs? Yeah, we did. We actually, yeah. But uh, instead, we uh, we always use breadcrumbs. But this time, we use gluten-free things. Glu- yeah, gluten-free things. Uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try it That's out. So and see adorable, <laughs> man. Like, help nice. me, bro. Don't make me. Well, you should, but you should try the spaghetti yeah. squash, guys. I what you just put together here. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, Natalie, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it really is. It's bright. The citrus, you taste on the shard. It's nice and bright. I hate to think this is healthy, but it is. This is absolutely a great <laughs> healthy, dish. Healthier. <laughs> yeah. yeah, healthier. We yeah. like to talk, yeah. you know, it's not everything at Choice is, like, super healthy, but we like to provide options, yeah. you know. And at the end of the day, it's definitely healthier than a, uh, you know, ground meat meatball with, like, you know, dairy ricotta. You send us okay. I'm going to taste the meatball because it's a meatless meatball, right? Yeah. It is, Brian. That's what, you, that's what we're going for. I'm, I'm going in for it. You sent us home the it's other day n- with a couple of chicken sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that goes back to the choice, right? You know, we want to provide options for every diet, dietary lifestyle. Sure. And it's not just like, hey, we're all vegan. We're all, you know, and, and really, um, you know, so we do a fried chicken sandwich, too. And, and for some, you know, true vegan folks, <laughs> they're like, you know, they won't come in because, you know, they only, Dedicated. Go, to, yeah, they only go to, like, true vegan restaurants. But you know, most people and most, you know, that are they're eating veggie, vegetarian or flexitarian or any, you know, this is the type of restaurant. They, this is the world we live in. Yeah. And I, I actually love it because we're just going in so many different directions. But I think at the end of the day, we can, we, we've can come far enough to be able to accommodate. Well, embrace the diversity. Yeah. I'll tell you because I just tasted that meatball. I put that up against anything. Really? Oh, my gosh. It's it's. Del- yeah, delicious. Um, it's delicious. I mean, and that's it. It's the bottom line. Is, is do, do you have to? We were at a meeting the other day, the American Beef Council, and they started talking they about let the you fact. In the door? Yeah, they didn't. They did not like me. I'll tell you that much. Um, <laughs> Why is that? But they they were talking about the fact that they're pushing six or twelve ounce steaks on everyone. That that was their big thing. Is like push a twelve ounce steak, push a twelve. Ounce, and I'm like, Remember? you've got the American Heart <laughs> Society right there. You're pushing 12 ounce. They're saying go to four Three or le- <laughs> yeah, like what? And so it's what, we're confused because we get these mixed messages. I think all the time out there with our food about like here you need to have a steak that's you know more food than you can consume in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where where have we gone yourself, wrong? Right? You know where have we gone wrong? Like gluttony. I mean that's why I love the choice. Yeah, I mean I think ultimately. It is confusing because you hear every day it's something different. Like coffee's good, it's bad, you know. And, and so for 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 our customer, they are pretty educated. And like veganism, it, it truly is pretty well known that it's good for your heart, it's good for your weight, it's good for you know a lot of different things. And it's and it's been studied on a mass scale. You know? And so um, you know beyond that. Now it's tasting good, you know. If, you know. if you look back five years ago, vegan vegetarian food was not tasty, you know. Yeah, and and those people out. buy with, with their taste buds. It's been proven time and time again. Eighty-five, ninety percent of their purchase decision is based on taste. Uh, and so now we're seeing a mass migration to veganism because the product itself is tasty and it's good. You know? Hey, here's a little curveball for you, Mike yeah. Fogarty. Though when you say the ninety percent, you know, purchase on taste. It's. I wouldn't go far as to say it's the opposite in the service industry as far as going to a place of sitting down to eat. But research has shown that it's the service that they come back for, not the quality of food. Yep. So you can go to a place, have somebody like me, you'll never want to go back again, even <laughs> even if the beer and food is the best beer and food in yeah. the world because you didn't really like my style or how you know I was rude or something like that. Whereas you go to another place where the service is immaculate and perfect and people look like mad, and so you want to go back <laughs> all the time, but the food sucks 
but you're like, well, I'll go back yeah. because you well, know, service Matt's is waiting on the me. next. Yeah, exactly. I mean, no doubt. And, and, and honestly, choice is, is a little bit different because we're you know, a fast casual model and we don't have servers per se, but yeah. we still provide service and a level. Yeah, but certainly. Well, no, a place like your, yeah, I mean, that works out perfect for the taste because, because it isn't like hey, you Jay, know, a restaurant. Before yeah. we wrap this up, I brought us back a couple of chicken sandwiches from Choice the other day. He gets mad at me when I bring him food. He saw it was from Choice. I didn't think he was going to eat it. I truly thought he'd save it, wait until he goes home, because he only eats in his britches at 2 a.m., right? <laughs> well, He's a, I mean, I have a, you know, I have, have a, I have a system, do. man. Don't mess with he it. He ate the sandwich, and it's a good sandwich. It was delicious. It was delicious. Wait, you had a critique, though. I did have a critique. Yeah, this, is, this is what I said. I said to Greg, I said, uh. This would be a lot better with some pickles on it. <laughs> I was well, just going to ask that. We're from the Chicken Kitchen, you know, which is not affiliated with Choice per se. <laughs> yeah, and we do have a classic chicken sandwich. Uh, if you order only online uh, through I, Uber, I mean, listen, we, it was it was delicious, right? But it's that moment of, you know, the old. I'm getting as I get old. I want you know, I've got something to say about everything. You know what I mean? That's right. well, how was that chicken sandwich? It came with a Cadillac. It's like, well, the Cadillac didn't really have white walls on. I'm kind of a white wall guy. Yeah. You know? I'd rather have white walls on the cat. I get it. Well, we, get we it. do have one as uh, garlic aioli, real dill pickles, uh, and butter less. And, you know, so. I mean, it was delicious. Give the plug. Okay, a couple things going on here. As we wrap up yep. here, I want you to give us a 30-second. Come see us at Choice. Yeah, you know, so uh, Choice, you know, feel free to check us out, www.choicemarket.co. Um, we have a couple, couple locations, one at 18 and Broadway, one at 10th and Ocean, and a few others opening up oh, here shortly. Dang it, the Colfax one. Can you do a, a yeah. 30 seconds a minute on that? Yeah, so our third location will be at Colfax and Gaylord, uh, right near East High School there, and that one will have fuel supercharging, uh, and uh, it'll be the epicenter of our, our new delivery program. So instead of farming out all of our delivery to third parties, we're going to centralize it there out of choice and have electric vehicles that are you know, that are going to be delivering not just you know, most of our delivery right now is prepared food sure. gonna, the whole store will be available including beer so you nice. get beer groceries prepared food delivered to your door within 45 minutes i wish the nice. world on you guys i really do Thank you. hard working guys <laughs> yeah. or i wish the world for you guys yeah. he, he's going to put it on you my not, son not and i talked supplier, about that yeah. <laughs> did i just put the world on his shoulders you just put the world on his shoulders yeah, he's got broad shoulders he can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, first of all, I want to make sure that you do talk, right? I do. I do. Yeah. Say something real cool. I'm single. I don't know. Oh, oh there you go. That's there pretty cool, go. man. So I, that's I, our general I, manager. I, like, you know, <laughs> right downtown. He's yeah. single. Yeah. yeah. Go busy. <laughs> and late night delivery. Yeah, you exactly. never know <laughs> how that works out. That was good, man. That was good. Great. You got a future. Great. Great. Real quick before we go to break, that's how you just kill every other guy's aspirations of anything I know. with two I'm words. You know? When Matt walks in the room, you're like, please have his wife be walking right by. Please, God. Like, I'm single. Well, I hate you too. <laughs> go ahead. Love you guys. Yeah, cool. Sure. We'll have you back many, many times. Yeah, Can't wait for to follow us. Thanks, thanks, Mike. It's always great yeah, to see you. Up next, Booze and News, but it's not Booze and News. It's going to be a welcome. Meridian Spirits, new sponsor. So exciting. What exciting. do they have to do with kombucha, though? True Booch is going to be on. I don't know what the what the connection is. Well, we'll We're going to have to find out. Tune in. Yep, coming up next right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Greg, you're a magician when it comes to mixing these things together. You could be, you'd be a technician in a DNA lab. You'd be awesome. We've got uh, some old guests here. Uh, Becca's boys, as I've been calling them. Becca came here with Kevin from Pinchy Tacos. Uh, guys, what are your names again? Uh, my name is Bex. And I'm Bo. Bex and Bo from? Um, Bla Bla Blazing Bros Lacrosse. Awesome. Yeah. And now, now, you have a connection to all this wackiness that's going on here, don't you? Yeah. Tell us what it is. So... We're actually in video production. We got a grant from our school. You want a job? <laughs> so, yeah, so we applied for a grant in our school. Awesome. Uh, just at the beginning of the year, and we won. So we were able to get the equipment we needed, and then, yeah. Awesome. Well, once you guys get things started, I want you back. Tell us where we are, where you guys are, so we can keep an eye on you. All right. Yeah. Okay? And that'd be okay. And the next time you come back... You guys ask me some questions. All right. Not yeah. that I know any answers, but at least they can certainly ask, right? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank now it's time for the modern eaters. Booze in the Brian, you can I get three more? Beer cold, my meat and grill, Please. and my entertainment explosive. All we need is a, is a chair and a, and a cooler beer. Here's your booze news. 
Okay, here we go. The Modern Eater Show last segment, booze in the news, all the booze news you can use. Brian, it's a special moment. We love to do this. We need some kind of button or a horn or something to honk, but new sponsor alert. They're joining the family. It's Meridian Spirits. Daniel, Alex, you guys, this is it. No turning back now. Thank you. <laughs> it's like when you take those vows and you exchange them, you go, hey, this is the person I have to be with for the rest of our lives. You don't have to be with us for the rest of your lives. You know, we did get to meet your mother today. so <laughs> You did. It's <laughs> pretty serious. That is serious. When you meet mom, that's it. My mom's pretty cool. Though. She's pretty cool. Yeah, we're in. That's you guys, it. welcome aboard. Thank you. I know, looking for all kinds of cool stuff. First, let's take one minute, talk about Meridium Spirits, where you're located. Just give them the, the lowdown. Um, meridiumspirits.com. Check us out there. Um, I know we were having problems with the age gate, so bear with us while we have some technical difficulties if you can't get through. Uh, 40-some stores in Denver Metro um, at the moment off-premise. So we're working to crack that bar and restaurant scene. Yeah, we're not in any Long bars and thing. restaurants yet. <laughs> hey, yet. Yet. Off but you're selling work. it in 40 retail locations. We are. That's, that's, that, to to do that's almost backwards. And it's just Congratulations. Thank you. There's yeah. only Thank you. two people. I mean, it's That's crazy. awesome. It is amazing. Yeah. It, it actually makes me wonder what you're doing to <laughs> crack uh, that code. We're not sleeping. Yeah, we're well, I know people love you because I have a, uh, one of my associates, uh, Amy Rapisardo, was telling me the other day. She's like, oh, Brian, I'm so stoked you guys, these guys are coming on your show. Sweet. So, Thank you. Very Hi, yeah. Amy. <laughs> yeah, new fam, right? These, Always. These guys, uh, I can't wait to follow their prod- progress. We do want to get some restaurant locations. I think which would be cool, don't you guys? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. End of the day, tasting room. Currently, no tasting room. Yeah. We are planning on having a tasting room probably in the next 12 months. We don't have any idea where it's going to be. It's not going to be in Elizabeth. We know that. Satellite <laughs> location. <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth is too far away. Nobody wants to w- go down there and drink cocktails. You and can't really get just, Ubers down there. No, there's no Uber. So we'll figure something out I in the Denver will. metro area. Yeah. It's going to be cool because the networking that we do here in the kitchen, I'll, I can't wait to see the group. We'll have to refer to the tape. We'll come back and go, okay, where were they? The, the year of our Lord right now, what is it? The date today, Jay? Uh, 14, December, <laughs> year of our Lord, 14. <laughs> 20, 20, 2019. 2019 yeah. years. Man, yesterday, the Friday the 13th lived up to its expectations yesterday. Oh, is that what it Just, was yesterday? <laughs> yes, Beautiful. that's Beautiful. what it was. I must have missed that. And did you know that any month that starts on a Sunday, you can expect a Friday the 13th? I didn't know that. Just let you know. There you go. And did you know every 13 weeks, the next Friday the 13th will be in 13 weeks? Oh, really weird. All right. What would you think of that? Amazing. Come on, Mark. <laughs> Mark, you can go straight from this place to Jeopardy like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, kombucha is a favorite of mine. I love kombucha. And it just so happens I sometimes mix it as a cocktail. Uh, don't tell Too anybody. Uh, but Mark and Trubucha here with us today. Do you guys like kombucha? Yeah, tell absolutely. the truth. Totally, you, not everybody has a taste for kombucha. No, I love it. I love it. And your stuff is really good. But I made an attempt. That's my attempt. Right there. This is you? Yeah, it doesn't look real good. It's It's like, you remember the, uh, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, (laughs) flush it down. (laughs) That's in between the brown and the yellow. I can see it. Look at that, Scooby, though. So You made a couple of babies, though. Look at that. Are those Scooby babies? These are Scooby babies. How do they know how to... Yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's just terrifying. <laughs> Chomp on that. Greg. Facebook would you eat it? No, I would not. I would Wait, not. Wait, where's John? John Irvin? He'll eat anything. He'll eat anything. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he will. So, uh, obviously, we over-aged. What would you call that? I call it, like, prime. I think it's, like, great. Really? No, no, no. no. <laughs> but he's so nice. if you like he? apple cider vinegar, this That's is it? actually like an apple cider vinegar now, but it's all natural. Did so, you taste it? I'm going to taste it with you guys. This is it? I this don't want to taste this. Come thing. on, taste it. <laughs> but you really want to just sip it, like a sipping vinegar. So basically. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> just the smell of it is terrible. It's gone from kombucha to vinegar. But if you need to clean anything, you now have the best cleaner you can oh, have in your entire man. house. That's a, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Kombucha is an interesting thing because you got to get it. Did you taste that, Alex? It's real tangy. Yeah. I, did you really taste this, Greg? No, did you not? You I, should. Because I couldn't get past the smell. No, this isn't bad. You should it, try it. Yeah, you no, should try it. It does not. Seriously. The smell. 
It does not taste like the no, smell. No, it doesn't. At all. Hey, Mark. That tastes any, pretty good. Is there any alcohol in that? In well, there can be. You, you know what? The, the <laughs> lid was on. If, if it didn't have the lid on, there wouldn't be. But I would say we're probably pushing about 3% alcohol in Wait, it right now. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> that's delicious. Exactly. That's delicious. Kombucha is an interesting thing. So just for the process, take a minute of how you make kombucha. Well, I mean, it's let's talk about what kombucha really is first. It's basically, there's only four ingredients in it. Sugar, tea, water, and the culture, which it created its own little new culture. Nice little scobies we got growing here. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, you just make a batch of sugar, or like uh, a watered-down sweetened tea. And then we put the culture in it, and mm-hmm. we let it sit there for 14 to 21 days, not... What has it been? 45 days. Yeah, yeah three like or four that. months, something three like months. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys at True Butcher are doing great things, and you brought us in a dispenser here. We've got it on tap oh, yeah. in the studio right now. What do, we have on tap? what do we have on top? We have white peach kombucha, and we also brought some of our ginger beer. So we have some prickly pear ginger beer. Compliments of Brian over at uh, Growers Organics, so the where we buy all of our ginger yeah. and all of our prickly pears and all of our fresh, fresh ingredients. So, yeah. Good to go. Um, we're He's got great stuff, man. I know. We love him. He comes back any time that we want him. Well, except last week. You were like, I don't, I don't think I'm going to come last week. <laughs> it was a little short notice. It was yeah. a little <laughs> short notice. We're going to be seeing more of you guys. And you guys, this is great. We're going to have so much fun. Hopefully, you'll be able to come to the kitchen often, Absolutely. early and often. And real quick, before we go, Mark, where's your location? People can come and taste it. Yeah, Lone Tree, 10047 Park Meadows Drive in Lone Tree. Awesome. Rich has actually been there. Sat down and had a date with his daughter, and they drank kombucha. Nice. The very first month we were open. Go on a kombucha date. Yep, absolutely. Why not? <laughs> Anything else that you're doing right now that's interesting? Oh, man, we've got the ginger beer uh, under Denver Ginger Company that uh, we've been rolling out. Um, we have a sports performance kombucha coming out. We actually have a kombucha sorbet as well that's going to be coming mm-hmm. out in 2020 as well. I'm down with that. I'm down with that for sure. Okay, what a show. Love wow. stuff. Whirlwind. Yeah. Of a night. It was crazy in the we'll beginning, and it on. finished real smooth. Next week, Chef Carrie Barrett's going to be in the kitchen. I'm going to try and get her to make fancy toast with Aspen baking bread. Okay. Chef Carrie Barrett's like always it. a blast from the Food Network and uh, Bravo's Top Chef. She'll be in the kitchen here with us next week on the Modern Eater Show. Thank you all involved. You guys were great. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. I was snowboarding yesterday. It was great. All right, cool. <laughs> all right, we'll be back next week right here at Studio Kitchen Colorado. Thanks, everybody involved on the show tonight. Little Rich, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, Greg Holland back. We'll see you next week right here on the Modern Eater Show.